September of 1959. What happened then? No, I was sent to prison March of 1960. Why were you sent to prison? Uh, I sort of broke the law in society. Well, what did you do? Me and two other kids, we held up a man for some petty cash. And uh, the judge sent all three of us to prison to serve an uh, indefinite sentence of five years, in which I ended up doing eight years and three months. You see, they sent me to a mental institution, a bug house. In the process of me doing those five years, and they held me over my maximum aspirations there. What was it like in the bug house? It was the most horrible place I ever entered. None but I witnessed none but shame, punishment upon others. Brutal punishment, and which they, I had my share of it also, the brutalness. Well, now that you're out, you're a free man again, what do you see in the future for yourself? Well, I don't know how much what I see and what it's going to be. Well, you know go together, but uh, I think that I will enjoy a peaceful, prosperous future with an enormous amount of happiness and bliss. What do you do for an income? Presently, I'm on welfare. But I am still residing with my family. How much do, do you get from welfare? $75.95 every two weeks. Will you say as much? Will you say it's sufficient? I can't say, I don't know. For a man to, you know, live a decent life on. Well, a decent life is not dependent upon... Primarily, primarily what is a decent life dependent upon? <clears throat> the self-satisfaction of the individual living it. And to each individual, self-satisfaction varies, you will say. Sure, some people are happy, some are miserable. With the same thing, huh? On the same earth. Yes. That possess the same things in life. We all have different circumstances. Oh, true. I agree. Yours sounds most miserable. And for the state to take five years of your life and then to turn it into eight years in a mental institution is a... It's a... What can one say to that? Inhumane thing. At the best, it's inhumane. By all means, I agree. Oh, Jesus. Tell me something, my good man. Uh, would you like for me to read a poem to you now? Please do. Well, people. I'm going to give you a look at 
toast rhythm. Them dirty bones, you are hip to them. Aren't you, princess? Pretty blue eyes. People, I once lived the life of a millionaire. Yeah, spend all my money and didn't seem to care. Taking my friends out for the time. Buying them beer, whiskey, champagne, and wine. But people, when I fell, I fell fat. I had a pair of drawers put on my ass. When I fell, I fell so low. There wasn't a place in this world for me to go. One day as I was walking down the street, I met a friend of mine they called Pimpin' Pete. I said, stay there, Pete. You look a mighty fine. What's the chances on me borrowing one, then die? Pete said, I'm high, I'm high, I'm high as a cake. And nigga, I'm not saying this for a motherfucking fight. But you have to be blind, crippled, and crazy, and cannot see with both of your legs cut off above your knees. You have to have the rock and the motor and the boogie-woogie flu. Roaches on your back singing Yankee Doodle Doo. You have to go up on top the Empire State Building. Jump off on your head. Get up and boogaloo around the corner to prove to me you ain't dead. You have to go down the bottom of the East River and bring up dry, dry sand. Walk the Hudson River, nigga, like you do on dry land. You have to bring me the Washington Monument in a paper bag. Miss Lena Long, first funky ass rag. You have to bring me the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean in a paper sack. Look up a camel's ass and blow the hump out his back. You have to wrestle she lie and fuck her in the gutter. Look up a cow's ass and bring me the price of butter. You have to bring me the rock that kill go light. The Hebrew children that stuck their feet in the fire. Then when you get a letter from your hometown saying your mama's a whore, in your papa's low down, saying your sister's pussy done turn to jelly, and your mama big fat tits hang below her belly. When the traveling salesman start fucking the farmer's daughter, when the price of cut drop to as low as a quarter, then I introduce you to a friend of mine who might lend you a nickel, but not a motherfucking dime. That was really nice.